So this is my very much beloved pair of Peregrine Tens. This has definitely seen some trail adventures over the years and I just loved running in these. We've also got the updated 11s. It was okay, it was a good shoe, not as good as the previous version in my eyes. And then we have the Peregrine 12s and I think this was a big step in the right direction for the Peregrine model and I really love taking this shoe out and running fast on more technical trails. So you can see we've got a lot of history when it comes to the Peregrine franchise here at the channel and I've just managed to get my hands on the all new Peregrine 13 in this rather good looking colorway. So today is the day I'm going to be lacing these up, we're taking them out for their first run and we are going to put this shoe through its paces. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and you are watching Run For Adventure. It's great to have you back and thanks for joining us for another video. We are currently in a bit of a first run, first impressions video extravaganza here at the channel because this time of the year is always super busy with all the big running brands bringing out updates or new models to their already currently existing road running or trail running lineup. Today we're having a look at an update uh, and I've actually popped on the new Peregrines indoors just to check them for sizing and I have to say it, they feel rather good and this upper fits my foot shape like a glove so that's got me even more excited about this first run so I'm going to give you a few quick details about the shoe and then we're going to be taking them out for a run and I'll give you a little bit more information once we're out on the trails. So this time round Saucony are actually offering three different versions of their very popular trail running shoe so we've obviously got the standard Peregrine that's the one we're going to be testing out today they also do a waterproof GTX version and they've got the Peregrine ST which is a soft ground shoe so that actually comes with a deeper lug on the outsole of 6.5 mil so it really does look like Saucony have got a peregrine trail running shoe to suit every type of runner as far as the stats go on the latest update it now retails in the UK for 130 pounds Saucony claim that this is one of the lightest peregrine trail shoes to date so coming in at 290 grams in my size a UK 9.5 still running off that same 4 mil heel offset but that midsole has been beefed up a bit when it comes to the cushioning so you now get a stack height of 28 mil on the heel and 24 mil under your forefoot. The upper looks to have had a few subtle tweaks made to it so we got a slightly different engineered mesh fabric used this time around with some bigger perforations in it all around the upper so that should really help when it comes to breathability and airflow. Uh, the ankle collar and the gusseted tongue design are pretty much identical to the Peregrine 12 and carry a very similar amount of padding. Some of the structural overlays on the upper have been slightly moved and we've still got that locking mechanism on the laces to give you that nice midfoot hold. So not any massive changes made to that upper and we see most of the changes coming when we take a look at the midsole. Working down the shoe and we've still got a full power run cushioning midsole. That is the same compound that was used in the Peregrine 12, the 11 and the 10 but like I've already mentioned you do get a deeper stack height this time round but don't worry it hasn't got no crazy midsole on it like we're seeing a lot of the new trail shoes that are being released this year. Saucony have just added 1.5 mil of power run so that should offer the runner a slightly plusher ride especially if you're taking the shoe over longer distance or you're having to soak up long sections of tarmac. Glad to see that Saucony have still added their Power Run Plus insoles because I think these make a big difference to the performance of the shoe and they're right up there with those awesome boomerang footbeds that you get in some of the Innovate models. So it is a very deep helping of Power Run Plus compound and this is very soft, very bouncy but also highly durable so it will keep that soft bouncy feel for a long period of time. So if you pair up those excellent Power Run Plus insoles with that deeper level of cushioning in the midsole, the new Peregrine 13 should feel pretty plush and pretty comfortable underfoot. And last but not least, another standout feature for me when it comes to the Peregrine model, and that is the 5mm aggressively lugged power track outsole. This has always given me a very consistent level of grip and traction, no matter what type of terrain or what type of underfoot conditions I'm running in. It can be loose dry trail, it can be rocky trail, wet or dry, and this 5mm multi-directional lug also offers good levels of traction when you're running in muddy, boggy conditions. And consistency 
see a grip on a trail running shoe outsole is a real hard thing to achieve and I think this Powertrack outsole does it really well. Also you might just be able to pick up on it, you've got that sort of lime green colourway poking through that outsole and that is socking his flexible rock plate that's been worked into that midsole construction under the forefoot. That's there to give the runner high levels of underfoot protection if you're running on rocky terrain. Now this is another area that I'm a big fan of because it really has offered me really good levels of protection over the years when I'm running on rocky trails or if I stand on something sharp sticking out of the ground. But what I really like about it is it gives you that protection but it doesn't compromise the flexibility or the performance of the shoe. Okay that is enough of that and it is time for some action. So I've selected a pretty challenging route that should give the new Peregrine a thorough testing. So there is going to be some tarmac involved so that's going to test out that deeper cushioning in the midsole but then we're going to pick up some sections of technical Cornish coast path as well so it's going to be a very interesting test for the new shoe but I'm off to get changed we'll lace these up and we'll see you guys out on the trails. Okay, so I might have done a wrong one here. I left Hale and it was glorious blue sky and sunshine and we've come up to St Agnes Beacon. Um, there is a very, very, very heavy sea mist. I can't see anything. I thought I'd bring you up here in the sunshine to show you the spectacular views and I don't think we're going to get many of them. However, it is a great place to test out the new Peregrine 13. So I've just parked in front of St Agnes Beacon. We're going to head down a, a section of tarmac. We've probably got three quarters of a mile of road before we pick up uh, the coast path. We're going to head off into the Blue Hills, which is a, a pretty technical section of coast path. Lots of ups and downs and it actually features in the vertical kilometer and then we're going to loop back round and we're going to head up to the top of the beacon. Like I said I don't think there's going to be many glorious views but it's going to be good shoe testing terrain. Okay I suppose it's time to get out of the adventure bus and get out in the elements because the wind's blowing and that mist is pretty damp as well but I'm still super excited to test out this new Peregrine so let's get out of the van let's get running. in my bones I could feel it in my face Hands in the sky I can feel the winds of change You live and you learn And I hope I've seen enough To make something right and Make up for what I You can see behind me, it is pretty bleak out here today. <laughs> I can't believe the difference in weather. They have had way more wet stuff up here than we've had down in Hale, which is only like a 15 minute drive away. The trails are way muddier and way wetter. Obviously, that's great for when it comes to testing a shoe out, especially a shoe like the Peregrine. You want some challenging, muddy, slippy conditions to test them out, and we're definitely going to get them today. What I'll do is I'll insert some clips from last year's KVK so you can get to see this route in all its glory, because when the sun is out, this is an epic section of trails, but we're not going to get to see that today. But, you know, hey-ho, never mind. And as far as the shoe goes, well, Fit wise, it fits my foot like a glove. It feels so precise. Feels like it's tailored for my foot and that always makes a trail shoe feel exciting. I would say it comes up true to size, so a 9.5 UK is fitting my foot really well. But yeah, it feels great. Feels really exciting. Right, let's crack on with this run and we'll uh, give you a little bit more info as we go on how the shoe's performing. But so far, a massive thumbs up. I was down but things are looking up I want to get high on you Caught by surprise by you Want you to make my heart feel as much as I know it should I want to get high on you Caught by surprise by you 
Okay, we just uh, clocked off four miles. And firstly, let me apologize if there's water on the lens. I am sorry, it's, it's not actually raining, but the sea mist is making the air so damp. I keep having to wipe the lens. So hopefully the footage looks all right. So like I just mentioned, you might recognize those steps coming down there. We're heading into Driftwood Spa. So on uh, Freedom Racing's KVK, this is the figure of eight. This is the crossover point where everybody's there cheering you on kettlebells ringing it is an awesome part of the race and we're going to be heading through and then straight out the other side okay so we've just gone past the driftwood and we're heading up the big steps so this is where you turn back onto the coast path in the race i'm gonna have a walk and uh we'll discuss how the shoes performing good excuse to walk the hill so yeah outsole performing how the peregrine outsole performs on all that sloppy muddy stuff super levels of traction felt really secure on my footing and then on, say, them rocky, wet steps I was coming down. Again, really good levels of grip. So, super confident feeling underfoot. I just recently tested out the Kalas Fuga EX Boa, and that shoe works so well for my foot shape. It felt wicked, but I honestly think the Peregrine 30s are fitting even better. It just feels so snug and so secure, and I, I feel so connected to the shoe because of it. Okay, let's get up the top of this hill, and then we're gonna loop back round. And then we're heading up the beacon to get some more elevation in, but loving it so far. No views, but awesome run. I'm done with the bad. I need a little bit of good. Settle in the world like everything is new. Stepped on a path that let me straight. These big old Cornish steps are tough to run. That's not the uh, sea mist dripping off my face. I've actually worked up a sweat. Wowzers. Caught by surprise by you. Want you to make my heart feel as much as I know it should. I want to get high on you. Caught by surprise by you. Okay, so we are back down in Driftwood and now we're heading up to the beacon. We've got a pretty big climb up to the beacon, so I'm going to walk and talk because the last thing you want to be doing is listening to me hyperventilating. But I think by the end of this run, I'm going to run out of superlatives for this new Peregrine 13. Sockney really are on top of their game at the moment. Again, another great update. Coming down those rocky sections, level of protection from that flexible rock plate is brilliant you don't feel anything through that midsole but you still feel connected the shoe still feels flexible you have still got all that ground feel but the level of protection is top notch and then we've got that deeper stack height of power run cushioning paired up with those brilliant power run plus footbeds and you know it just feels so much more comfortable i think it's definitely a big step up from the 12s that was a lovely shoe, but maybe they stripped it back a little bit too much. And the 13s, dare I say it, are feeling as good as the Peregrine 10s. And that was a cracking shoe. Obviously, this is just our first run, first impressions. But, you know, you can tell a lot from that first run of our shoe. And it's feeling great. Anyway, leveling out a bit. I suppose we came here to run. We better do some running. On to the beacon. I almost didn't find the beacon in this mist. I couldn't get my bearings. I couldn't work out where it was. It is pretty hostile up here. Super heavy sea mist and a really strong wind. But we got up here and we ran all the way and the legs felt strong. Now we got a wicked descent heading down that way. So I'm gonna get out of this weather. I cannot believe how different it is here compared to when I left home in Hale. But let's get down that descent and back in the safety of the adventure bus. Uh, 
We made it. We made it back down alive. It is bleak out there now. Unbelievable coming off there. Freezing cold and so damp, so wet. Sorry if there was loads of water over the lens. There's not a lot I could do about it. But yeah, we made it down in one piece and uh, it's been a great run. I actually, believe it or not, got lost coming off the top of the beacon. In this weather, you've got no reference points. It's so hard to know where to go. I took a left when I should have took a right, ended up in a village somewhere and I had to get out Google Maps to find my way back, <laughs> believe it or not. I've always gone on, on the channel about how poor my navigation is, and there's a perfect example. But I think we need to get back to the studio, get warmed up, have a nice warm shower, change your clothes, and then we're going to break down the brilliant performance of the new Peregrine 13 in a bit more detail. Well, with getting lost coming off of the beacon there, I ended up running nearly 11 miles. And to be precise, it was 10.73 miles with 1,800 feet of elevation. So we definitely got a good workout for the legs on today's run. But where do I start with the new Peregrine 13? Now, if you follow the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I tend to get on with sock and knee running shoes and they do work very well for my foot shape. They've also been making some great road and trail shoes over the last couple of years but without trying to sound like a Saucony fanboy, this is a fantastic update. Now, I don't want to sound overhyped about these because it was just our first run, but I am very excited about the new updated Peregrine, and I think Saucony have another winner on their hands. Firstly, that update to the upper might have been very subtle, but I think it's made quite a big difference. Feels very plush wrapped around your foot, but it also feels super precise when it comes to fit. Well, on my foot shape anyway. So I felt really well hugged and locked around that midfoot, dialed into that heel, and it just makes the Peregrine feel like it's an extension of your foot and you're not actually running in shoes. So I felt really well connected, very light and very nimble underfoot. With Saucony adding that 1.5 mil of cushioning to that midsole, it has made it a very comfortable shoe on sections of tarmac. And I tested that out really well today because I think in total, we probably ran about three miles on the hard stuff and I had no discomfort issues at all. The shoe felt really nice and plush underfoot. But I also think it offers a bit more protection, especially when you pair it up with that flexible rock plate in the forefoot. Now, this has always been an area where the Peregrine has excelled, but I think the Peregrine 13 is even better when it comes to running on rocky terrain and the protection that it offers. And finishing up, the performance of that outsole was as good as any Peregrine outsole that I've ever run with. So the levels of grip and traction were super high all round, and we pretty much tested it out on every type of terrain on the route we ran today. So we had wet tarmac, we had rocky sections, dry and wet, gravelly trail, we had mud, puddles, we had steep climbs and steep technical descent. So it definitely was thoroughly tested and it looks like the Peregrine 13 is gonna be another super consistent trail shoe when it comes to grip and traction from the outsole. Obviously, this is just our first outing in the new Peregrine 13s, and I am looking forward to getting them back on my feet and hitting the trails in them again. It'll be good to get some longer runs in them, although nearly 11 miles straight out of the box and no issues is a pretty good start. But I will be clocking up the miles in them over the next couple of weeks, and then we'll be back with our full in-depth review. I'd love to hear from any viewers that have been running in the 13s and get your thoughts. You know, are you like me? You've been blown away with the updates and how the shoe runs and feels now or did you prefer the previous version and the performance it gave you? Let us know all about it in the comments below. Okay, I'm off to see if I can make these trail shoes white again. Don't forget you can follow us on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook or Strava. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. Really hope you enjoyed our first impressions on the Saucony Peregrine 13s. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll be back here very soon with more exciting running content. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. So that is how we do the run throughs. Hope it hasn't spoiled the magic for you, but yeah, it's a lot of running through, turning around, turning the camera and running back. All good fun though, keeps you on your toes.